Doug, is it true that the fish are actually changing color as well in the fall? Yeah, it is true. The yeah. brown trout and the brook trout change color and also a strain of rainbow trout up here called the Coleman yeah. also uh, has a color change as well. So why are they changing colors in the fall? So the primary uh, reason for the color change is for the spawn, basically mm -hmm. to attract the females. And the brown trout go through an orangish color change in their belly. Mm -hmm. um, they start to darken a little. The brook trout get a real deep red under the belly area. And the rainbow trout get a little bit of rosiness in the gill plate and also on the lateral line. So is there something about the temperature change that causes them to spawn in the fall? Yeah, once the water drops to a certain temperature, that triggers the spawning behavior and they immediately want to start staging up into in the tributaries, the lakes and the inlets and get ready to move up and spawn and that also triggers the color change. So that's a good point there, you know, location. What are, what are some good tips on where to fish? Well, all the inlets of the lakes, they're going to have the biggest concentration of fish, you know, at that time. Um, so I would start there, find some patterns that are working, experiment a little, see what the fish really want, and uh, once you find that out, you should do pretty well. Um, in the rivers and the creeks, if the water's really cold, I would focus on the slower moving water, the eddies, you know, the fish don't want to expend a lot of energy, they want to just stay a little bit warmer, be a little insulated from the cold. So you want to fish longer leaders, make sure you have plenty of weight to get your flies down to the bottom where the fish can actually see it and a proper presentation can get you some pretty nice fish. Also, you know, the bugs, there's different bugs that are hatching. So what kind of different flies would we need? There are, well in the summertime, that's usually the peak time for all the different bugs, mm -hmm. you know, to hatch. You know, there's quite an assortment for the fish to choose from. In the fall, they still have quite a few bugs. Um, you know, you don't have the numbers that you do in the summer, but mm -hmm. um, there's some stoneflies, some caddis, a few damselflies left, a lot of midges, and a couple of mayflies. But there are also some baitfish patterns we uh -huh. like to use, you know, streamer flies, which imitate baitfish. You know, the trout, they want to fatten up for the approaching winter. They're not only going to be eating insects, but they're really going to be keying in on, you know, even smaller trout. You know, they become cannibalistic and will actually eat their, their own kind, too. That's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> know that so this is instinct so the fish know that the winter's coming they're gonna want to eat more so fall is actually a great time to go fishing it is yeah if you're looking for that trophy fish the fall time is a great time to get out there and do it right and you know good thing that you brought up that picture because when you're taking that picture I heard that the release and the catch of the fish that's really important can you tell us a little bit about that process? Yeah, um, if you're gonna release the fish, it's really important to revive the fish first. Mm -hmm. And that starts once you land the fish in the net. As soon as you land the fish, most people wanna take the fish out and photograph it right away. But the fish has been through a long battle, especially bigger fish, they take more time to get in. So you wanna revive the fish in the net, make sure it's upright, nice and strong, and able to swim away. Then take the fish out, you know, take a few photographs, put him back in the net, make sure he's fully revived, yeah. and then you can go ahead and release him. 